ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಗುರುಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಗುರವೇ ಸರ್ವೋಕಾನ ಭಿಷಜೇ ಭವರೋಗಿಣ ನಿಧೇ ಸರ್ವಿದ್ಯಾಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ ವಕ್ರತುಂಡ ಮಹಾಕಾಯ ಸೂರ್ಯಕೋಟಿ ಸಮಪ್ರಭ ನಿರ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಗುರು ಮೇ ದೇವಸರ್ವಾರ್ಯೇಶ ಸರ್ವದ ಗಜಾನನ ಭೂತಗಣಾಧಿ ಸೇವಿತ ಕವಿತ್ತಜಂಭೋಪಲಸಾರ ಭಕ್ಷಿತ ಉಮಾಸುತ ಶೋಕ ವಿನಾಶಕಾರಣ ನಮಿ ವಿಘ್ನೇಶ್ವರ ಪಾದ ಪಂಕಜ ಶುಕ್ಲಾಂಭರಧರ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಶಚಿವರ್ಣ ಜಧರ್ಭಜ ಪ್ರಸನ್ನವದನ ಧ್ಯಾಶಾಂತ ವ್ಯಾಸ ವಶಿಷ್ಟನತ್ತಾರ ಶಕ್ತೆ ಪೌದ್ರಮಕಲ್ಮಶ ಪರಾಶರಾತ್ಮಜ ವಂದೇ ಜುಗದಾತ ತಪೋ ನಿಧಿ ವ್ಯಾಸಾಯ ವಿಷ್ಣುಯ ವ್ಯಾಸೂಪಾ ವಿಷ್ಣುವೇ ನಮೋ ವೈ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ ದೇವಾಶಿಷ್ಟಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ್ಯ ನರಂ ಜೈವ ನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವೀ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸೋಜಯ ಮುಧೀರೇಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿ ಲುಕ್ ಟಟ್ ಪಾಂಡವಸ್ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಟು ಹಸ್ತನಾಪುರ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆಮ್ then they got the desert land called kandav prastha was given by dhritarashtra yudhishthira and his brothers went there with krishna and they turned that kandav prastha into indra prastha they turned into a fertile land and built their own kingdom there and after some time narada comes there and narada says brothers should have a rule around draupadi having a common wife they should have some rules around it otherwise they may end up like Sh- sunda and upasunda who fought over tilottama and narada explains the story of sunda and upasunda and tilottama how tilottama was created by vishakarma and then once that's done how she because of her the brothers fought and uh, died each other killed each other so after that listening to that story pandavas make a rule that when one of them is with tropadi other one will not go there okay so they make a rule so that means they will not disturb so with that rule they lived there for many years happily no issues and one day like that when they were living like that a brahmana comes okay a brahmana comes crying he comes crying there saying that some robbers thieves took his cow away cows away and they are taking those cows away so he comes there asking for help king please help help us rescue our my cows because those robbers are taking away my cows so what what uh, he says that the king by taking a sixth part of the produce that means a king is allowed to take tax okay collect tax a sixth part of whatever that's produced he can take that as a tax so by taking that his duty is to protect his people okay so if he is not doing protect he is not protecting his people but just taking tax like most of modern governments okay if they don't do that then they incur sin okay that's what brahmana says and he says help me and arjuna listening to this cry he says i will rescue your cows i will punish those thieves and he tries to go and pick up his weapons his bow and arrows and things he goes there but he realizes that wherever he kept his bow and everything in that room at that time yudhishthira was sitting with draupadi okay he goes outside and he, he realizes draupadi and yudhishthira were there and he was in two minds what to do shall i go inside and take my bow arrows and weapons by that i will be breaking the rule that when somebody is with draupadi we should not go okay or shall i not go okay if i don't go the brahmana will lose his cows and brahmana will be not be happy so thinking about that arjuna decides that it is right to help the brahmana the consequence of entering into yudhishthira's room 
is a room where Yudhishthira and Draupadi are there. Consequence is Arjuna has to go to forest. He has to go and live in forest like a asset. So that's okay. Okay. Because his, it is harming his body, but he's gaining virtue. He's doing the virtuous thing by helping a Brahmana. So he decides to enter that room. He, that, and he goes into that chamber, takes his weapon and walks out and chases those thieves. He chases them and shoots arrows and rescues the cows and gives those cows back to Brahmana and Brahmana is very happy. After that incident, Arjuna returns to his palace and he goes and sees Yudhishthira and says, as per the agreement rule we had, I broke that rule. I entered while you were with Draupadi. So I broke that rule. And as per the rule, I am going to the, live in the forest as a brahmachari for 12 years. Okay. He says that, but Yudhishthira says, why? Why are you doing this? And then Yudhishthira composes himself. He was shocked and in sorrow and grief. He says, why are you doing this? And then Yudhishthira tries to tell Arjuna that he doesn't have to do this because when a elder brother is with his wife, okay, if there is a need, younger brother can enter that chamber. But if a younger brother is with his wife, elder brother should not go there. Okay, that's the morality. That's the rule. Yudhishthira clarifies. But then Arjuna says, and with that Yudhishthira says, you did not break the rule you can come and this was a need for to rescue the cows brahmana's cows and that's the reason you should not worry about it and with that yudhishthira tries to convince arjuna not to do anything but arjuna says the rules are rules okay we made the rules i heard from you but i broke the rules the rule i made i broke it i can't simply change the rule just because it's you and me, and you say it's okay to break the rule, and I can break the rules. Okay. So Arjuna, with this, what, what Arjuna shows is, even if you agree something and break it, you have to follow the consequences. Even if someone says it's okay, don't do it, you have to still do it. Okay. With that, Arjuna says, I have to go because I have to follow the truth, and truth is my weapon. I cannot go away from whatever the truth is. So I will go to forest. And with that, he takes permission from Yudhishthira, Kunti and others. And he leaves Khandavprastha to live in a forest life for 12 years. He leaves. Okay. Four brothers and his mother, wife, he leaves them and he goes to forest. And with Arjuna, as he went on a forest life, with him, many Brahmanas also went. Okay, from Kandavaprastha, they also went because Arjuna was going not just in the forest, he was going to a lot of holy places, Tirthakshetras. So he was going there. So with him, they also said, yeah, we will also come. Okay, then the many Brahmanas went, they went to many places, many forests, lakes, rivers, seas, and regions they went. Okay, and after all that, they went to uh, uh, where the Ganga was started, they went to that place and thought of residing there. While residing there, they the Brahmanas performed a lot of Agnihotras. Agnihotras is uh, Agnihotri is someone who maintains the fire. Okay, as a Brahmana, supposed to have maintained the fire. That means they pour sac of uh, offerings every thrice a day into a fire, okay? The ghee offering. That's maintaining, again. that fire will never go off, okay? That fire is maintained throughout from the day one has Upanayana Samskara, that means they have the sacred thread from that point till they take sannyasa in their very final few days, they have to maintain that fire. These days, there are not many Brahmanas who maintain Agni like that. Okay, in the olden days, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, all used to maintain Agnis. Okay, so here the Brahmanas, they used to do a lot of sacrifices. They were over observing and those Brahmanas never deviated from the right path. Okay, and establishing their uh, Agni 
they performed all the rites and rituals that supposed to a brahmana should do okay in that place so because of those brahmanas that place looked very beautiful and arjuna lived with them for some time like that while he was living one day morning arjuna went to ganga and he was offering his argya to his pitrus okay his ancestors while he was offering the answer argya he was dragged inside the water okay he was dragged and he was taken away from for the, <coughs> excuse me for the down in the water and once he was taken by ulupi ulupi was a daughter of naga serpents okay and she was carried he was carried to a mansion of kauravya okay kauravya is the king of nagas and he was from the dynasty or the race of airavata airavata you probably heard the names when we were talking about kadru and vinata and stories kadru had all the children as snakes and one of the snake was airavata okay so from that race kaurava was born and from kaurava's daughter ulupi took arjuna away and when arjuna realized where he was there was a fire ignited everything was prepared and arjuna finished his daily offerings to that fire and then after that he asked this girl who are you why did you do this kind of things rash things why did you bring me here tell me where i am okay i don't know this place where is which place is this tell me all about it and ulupi explains that she is the daughter of kauravya and she says that i am attracted to you i want to marry you and that's why i brought you here and arjuna says he is under a vow of brahmacharya so and but ulupi says that she will not harm his vow so and with that they agree and they marry and arjuna spends the day and night there and the following morning when arjuna wakes up ulupi brings him back to the shore of ganga and with that she leaves him and while leaving she also gives him a blessing that he can also become invisible sorry invisible in the waters okay so that he can also win over any <coughs> creatures that's in the water okay amphibious creatures anything because he was very skilled on fighting anybody on earth so now he's got the skill to fight go invisible in water and fight those creatures as well any rakshas or anybody coming through there arjuna can now fight them as well so with that arjuna comes back to uh ganga plain and he goes to his brahmanas all the brahmanas and explains everything whatever happened okay they were all wondering where did he go yesterday he went to ganga and disappeared from there and then he comes back and explains everything that happened and then from there arjuna starts his journey again so again this arjuna's journey this 12 years journey is quoted outside mahabharata mahabharata talks very little about in three four chapters okay but his journey is quoted in many other puranas because wherever arjuna goes he meets one of these sages either agastya vashishta bhrugu or various other brahmanas narada and every holy place and other things all those holy place narrations and things is covered in some of the other puranas okay arjuna meeting them discussing with them them explaining what is right what is the sacred speciality about a holy place for example skanda purana talks about puri jagannath rameshwara and all these kind of things when arjuna went there okay so all these things are explained in the puranas mahabharata has only about four or five chapters on this his 12 years of life so he went to agastya agastya's place vasishta speak bhrugu hirinya bindu all these peaks he went mountains and then he went to many holy places and then they started going towards east direction and to explore the regions there there he goes and he again comes across many lakes and rivers there he comes across naimisha forest and then he comes across uttalini which is full a river full of lotuses nanda aparananda kaushiki 
Gaya, Ganga, all these rivers he can, comes across. Okay, in those, and then in all those tirthas he takes bath, and then he purifies himself, and then moves ahead. Finally, he comes across Mahendra Mountains, crossing the uh, Kalinga Kingdom. I went to Mahendra Mountain. From there, he went to Manipura. Okay, Manipura is in the eastern India state. Okay, he goes there. There. He comes across, he comes to the kingdom of Chitravahana. Chitravahana is the king. He goes there. There, Arjuna comes across his daughter, king's daughter called Chitrangada. And Arjuna wishes to marry her. Okay. And he goes to king and introduces himself and he seeks his daughter's hand. King, <coughs> excuse me, Chitrangada says that he he is happy to give his daughter to Arjuna, but there is one condition. The condition is that in his ancestor, okay, his name was King Prabhanjana. That Prabhanjana was childless. Okay, they worshipped that King Prabhanjana, Chitrangada's ancestor king called Prabhanjana, did not have children. And Prabhanjana worshipped Mahadeva, that is Shiva and Parvati. And they got a boon. They got a boon. They asked for uh, children and so asked a boon that our dynasty, our family will always have children. And Shiva and Parvati blessed him that you will always have children, but you will always have only one child. In your family, you will always have only one child. And with that blessing, they always had someone in the family. Chitrangada happened to have, sorry, Chitravahana happened to have only one child that's a daughter called Chitrangada. And <coughs> he made Chitrangada as Putrika. So Putrika is, so when someone has only daughters, okay, so the Shraddha and other ancestral rites, okay, ancestral rituals that needs to happen, Pinda and everything that needs to happen, offer, that should not stop. Okay, if just because one has only daughter, it, the, those rights rituals should not stop. So normally those are done by male children, sons. Okay, if you don't have a son, then the daughter that the person has, they are made as putrika. Okay, putrika means she carries that right. She carries that right. She does not do it on her own. What she does is her first son becomes eligible to offer Pinda, the Shraddhas, perform Shraddhas, everything to his grandfather. Okay. So he becomes effectively that grandson is acts like a son. So that's why here the king Chitravahana says that my daughter has been made as a putrika. So whoever she gives birth to should continue my dynasty. You can't say that I married Chitrangada and whoever is born is now one among the Pandavas race and I will take him to kind of Prastha and they become live in my family. No, that should not happen. Chitrangada will live here. The son or daughter born to her will live here and continue my dynasty. And Arjuna agrees to that condition. They marry and Arjuna stays there for three years. But after three years, Chitrangada gives birth, birth to a son. And after some time, Arjuna leaves his wife and continues his journey. <coughs> so Arjuna, from there, Manipura, he went to many other sacred waters. He went to start a journey towards southern direction. He comes across east coast of India, all the holy places, okay, and seashore, all the places there. So while he was coming across, he comes across a five holy tirthas, holy rivers or holy waters, which were not used by any of the people. Okay, they were not used by anybody going there, even though they were holy, people were not going there. They are called Agastya, Saubhadra, Paulama, and Karnadama. Okay, so sorry, Karandama. So th these are the five. So and and Bharadwaja. So these all these were had the these holy waters had the 
power to destroy the sins or gain the merits of a horse sacrifice and things like that. They were great holy places, holy waters, but people were not visiting them. Arjuna wonders why people are not going there. And he asked the Brahmanas, why you are not taking dip in this water, even though this is said to be cleans all the sins, or this is this is said to give merit of a horse sacrifice. Why are you not taking in dip in this? And the Brahmanas explained that there are crocodiles in this water, and anyone goes into that water, they eat them. That's why people don't go there. Arjuna says, okay, I will go and see what's happening. And he goes into that water, Saubhadra. He enters the water. As soon as he enters, a crocodile bites his leg. Arjuna drags that crocodile to the shore. And as soon as that crocodile touches the ground on the shore, it turns into a beautiful Apsara woman. Okay. And that woman is called Varga. And she says, expands the story. She says that, Herself and other four called Saurabheya, Samichi, Babduda, and Lata. Five of them were actually in Kubera's place. And one day when they were going to Kubera's house, <coughs> they come across a Brahmana. Okay, That Brahmana was meditating, but these girls were mischievous. They tried to distract him, singing and dancing and all the kind of things in front of to, to disturb his meditation. And that Brahmana finally becomes very angry and he curses them. You are so annoying. You become crocodiles for 100 years. He curses them. And these Apsaras with that Brahmana, immediately they ask for forgiveness and release from that curse. And the Brahmana says that, they will stay in the water, eating up whoever comes to that water for 100 years. And after that, one man will come and he will drag them out of the water. And from that point, they will be released of the curse. And this Brahman also says that these five waters where these crocodiles live will be known as Nari Tirthas and they will become virtuous as a, anybody these become sacred waters. Okay, So after that, Narada comes there and Narada explains to these Apsaras, <coughs> five Apsaras, Varga, Saurabhi, Sumichi, Babduda, and Lata, that at some point in future, you go and these Apsaras thinking where to go and which water to stay. <coughs> and then at that time, Narada comes and says that, go and stay in the Southern Ocean. And at some time, Dhananjaya will come there. Dhananjaya is Arjuna's name, another name. Okay, Dhananjaya will come. He will drag you out of the water. And from that, you will be released from this curse. So once Arjuna hears that story from Varga, he goes to other four waters as well. He drags the crocodiles from there and releases the other four women, Apsaras, from there. And then he thinks about Chitrangada again in Manipura. He left her behind. And Arjuna thinks about that. He, he goes back again to Manipura. He goes back and there he meets his son at that time. Okay. His son was born when he just he, when he left last time. His son was just born. And now he's a young boy called Babruvahana. He's, he was named as Babruvahana. And after meeting him, Arjuna goes towards Gokarna. Gokarna comes to now on the west coast. Okay. Arjuna again comes down. He goes down. To, towards the west coast of India. So <clears throat> Arjuna, after coming there, he goes to next, he goes again many holy places on the west coast. So and he comes to Prabhasa. Okay, he comes to Prabhasa. Prabhasa, where is where? River Saraswati, which is currently hidden, it's called Gupta River. That river Saraswati joins ocean. Okay, and it's a very sacred place. Again, Prabhasa, you will hear about Prabhasa many times in Mahabharata. Later on, Yudhishthira and everybody will go to Prabhasa as well. There are many Puranas talk about Prabhasa. There is a Shiva temple as well in Prabhasa, Jyotirlinga. Okay, Somnath temple, which is very sacred. So Arjuna comes to Prabhasa. Okay, from Prabhasa, Krishna 
hears that Arjuna is there and so Krishna went to see him. So Arjuna and Krishna meet up. This uh, Arjuna explains everything that happened. Okay, the, how he went to Yudhishthira's chamber and because of that he was roaming across forest and sacred waters and places all along and everything that happened. And after some time, so from Prabhasa, Krishna and Arjuna, after hearing all that, went to Raivataka mountain. And there in that mountain, it's like mountain is like a hill station. Okay, It's a kind of holiday place, Raivataka mountain for Yadavas, Krishna and his place people. So they go there, Krishna, because of Krishna's command, it, there was everything was prepared in that, all the good food, drinks, everything that's required, entertainment was there, actors, performances, dances, music, everything was there. And then in that mountain again, while resting, Arjuna explains all the places again he went and visited and whatever things happened, and then they slept. In the morning, they went to Dwaraka. When they reached Dwaraka, the citizens there realizing that Kunti's son Arjuna has come because they all heard about Arjuna's bravery and strength and everything else, skills and everything. They wanted to see him. So everybody gathered around and they invited him. A lot of people, thousands and thousands of people came there to see him. All the Bhojas, Vrishnis and Andakas. Again, these three are the tribe names, Bhojas, Vrishni and Andaka tribe names of Yadavas. Together, they are called Yadavas. Okay, So Krishna comes from Yadava tribe. So they are called Bojas, Prishnis, and Nandakas. So all of them were there. All of them respectfully welcomed Arjuna and Arjuna also paid his respects to them. And whoever is deserving, he seeks their blessings. And then they all welcome him. And then Arjuna goes to Krishna's house and then he spends many days there. After some time, Arjuna, the Vrishnish, Boja, Sandakas, that is the other verse, were having a celebration, a festival in Raivataka mountain. Okay, in that Raivataka mountain, they were having a huge festival. They there gathered all the people for celebration. And when the celebration people gathered, they also gave away a lot of wealth and everything to Brahmanas. And they celebrated the festival with a lot of very good dresses, jewelry, everything, entertainment, dance, food, everything. Okay, It's like if you go to any Indian festival, uh, any temple festival, okay, so you will see that a lot of things will be there. Dances, festival, decorations, all these kind of things. So the Raivataka mountain, you had similar things. Who all came? All the Yadavavi warriors, came there, elders, everybody, Balrama with his wife, Revati, Ugrasena with his wives, Rukmineya, Samba, Krura, Sarana, everybody, Satyaki, all the Veeras came and with them also Vasudeva, that is Krishna and Partha also went there. While they were in the Raivataka mountain, Arjuna comes across Krishna's sister called Bhadra and Arjuna desire to marry her and noticing Arjuna wishing to marry her Krishna asked cheekily you are I thought you are a sannyasi now you are a brahmachari how can you wish to have a girl marry a girl and Krishna says that then Krishna says she is actually my sister if you really want to <clears throat> then he says that uh, if you really do you really if you really want to want her to marry oh sorry want to marry her you should speak to my father okay then krishna says arjuna says yes i definitely want to marry her and i will speak to her and if she becomes my wife my life will change okay so i will have all the prosperity in my life so it's like saying uh, having her as my wife it's like I get everything. Okay, so the Arjuna was so happy that to have her as a wife. And Krishna then says, my father normally probably will do a Swayamvara, but Swayamvara, you can never guarantee that you are going to get that girl. She may take the garland and put it on someone else's head. Okay, so if you are a brave Kshatriya, 
the one way to marry a girl is to abduct her okay you kidnap her and take her and then marry that method is okay for is a good method for kshatriyas okay so he says that if you really want it <coughs> if you don't want to leave it to choice and depends on what subhadra is going to do if you don't want that to happen you can make your own decision you can abduct my sister you can kidnap my sister okay what a good brother krishna i see okay he tells kidnap my sister okay arjuna that's my sister you can kidnap her if you really want her don't wait for her to make a decision you can kidnap her okay so krishna says this and arjuna agrees okay they both make a plan to kidnap subhadra and before they kidnap arjuna wanted to get yudhishthira's permission they quickly send out a messenger to kandavaprastha and yudhishthira says yeah if krishna is okay i'm okay okay so they agree and then they want us they got the approval okay they prepare for this big event kidnapping subhadra so once everything is ready so they realize that subhadra is in raivataka mountain arjuna consulted discussed everything with krishna prepared his plan okay subhadra is in the temple she is going at 9 o'clock i'm going there 9:30 i will she is coming back at around 9:45 i'll stop at this bus stop and then i'll take her something like that okay so he prepares his plan and he prepares his chariot with a very good chariot with all the weapons and everything fully prepared and he puts the horses savya and sugriva savya and sugriva you will again hear these two horses regularly these are krishna's horses okay so remember the names krishna's horse name <laughs> savya and sugriva so they are so they prepare those they are those horses go very fast krishna's horses so the chariot krishna's chariot horses everything is ready with weapons arjuna is ready subhadra she went to mountain after worshiping the deities there giving all the wealth and everything to brahmana she was coming on her way back to dwaraka while she was coming arjuna stops her gets hold of her hand and takes her into his chariot and starts driving towards kandavaprastha immediately everybody so because subhadra was a princess she had soldiers around her all of them got scared because it's arjuna and they started they went back to dwaraka and they went in the adava court and said the leader of that sudarma he informs them that they saw arjuna taking subhadra by hand and by force and immediately they blow the trumpets the leader there blow the trumpet once the trumpet is blown all the soldiers all the warriors yadav warriors whatever they were doing whether they are eating whether drinking or whether relaxing or doing something else they immediately stopped put their armor and everything else picked up their weapons because that's the signal saying okay something is wrong get prepared okay so once the trumpet sound is heard everybody prepares and they all assemble once they assemble the leader there he says that jishnu has done this okay jishnu came here he was our guest and remember what jishnu did he kidnapped our daughter our girl subhadra was kidnapped by jishnu so jishnu is arjuna san other name okay jishnu dhananjaya bhartha all this so reminds everybody says prepare your cars bring your weapons bring your armor everything bet get ready there is no time we have to go and stop jishnu now and bring subhadra back home so while they were saying that balrama was sitting there and balrama says he looks at a krishna krishna was quietly sitting as if i don't know anything about this okay krishna was sitting quietly and balrama looks at krishna and says why are you sitting like this as if nothing has happened and no urgency why are you staring like this everybody talking you are just keeping quiet arjuna came here 
and we respected him we gave him like any guest we respected him more than any normal guest we respected him we did all the service to him he ate in and then he now stabbing us in the back so if you whether you agree or not i am going to go today and kill that arjuna and all the kauravas i alone go there and do that balrama becomes very angry and he says that he is going to do everything okay so he is going to stop arjuna kill arjuna not just arjuna everybody from kauravas family so when he says that everybody assembled there all the bhojas rishni sandakas everybody they all say yes yes we should stop okay and krishna was sitting there and thinking okay okay did not say a word what happens next we probably will see next week okay any questions on today yeah so when arjuna has a son with chitragandha what happens to his son so he grows in manipura himself so he grows in manipura it doesn't mahabharata doesn't say much about him later on i mean there is a little reference during the war that he is there and later in mahabharata but there are other stories that when mahabharata later in mahabharata when the ashwamedha parva comes in when pandavas complete the war and take the horse sacrifice release the horse sacrifice arjuna and everyone goes there and babruhana captures that horse okay so and arjuna and babruhana fight each other and arjuna technically was killed by babruhana but then revived by uh, his wife ulupi at that time okay ulupi comes and revives him so because arjuna had a curse that he would be killed so ganga had a ganga had cursed him, something like that so you will come to that in ashwamedha parva but you don't hear much about babruhana till that time he grows into a, again babruhana becomes a great warrior because he faces up arjuna and defeats arjuna in the war later war any other questions Okay. also when did krishna get a sister because when he did he get it after he defeated karna or before he defeated karna krishna sorry repeat again please so when did krishna get his sister when was his sister born krishna do you mean krishna defeated kamsa you mean yeah i think i think it's after i'm not sure i probably need to check bhagavat purana which might explain when subhadra was born so i think it's after any other questions okay in that case we should see next week thank you bye thanks bye